Now, that's nice that you can twist this sensor out without losing the pressure. And I'll show you the pinout. Uh, you, the flat side indicates ground. So there's three pins inside. This one's ground. And then the middle pin is the output or data, whatever. And the third pin will be the 12 volt. Of course, the way that I did it, um, I almost didn't have to know the pin out because I just connect from one side to where it's supposed to go and just make sure I'm not crossing any over. Um, that way I won't damage the sensor, but then in order to um, read it, you hook up your meter across ground and the center pin. I am testing the pressure sensor and the air conditioning system by making sure that whenever I uh, depressurize the lines that the pressure sensor duty cycle changes. So the pressure sensor is a G65, that's its code, um, and it outputs a square wave with a duty cycle that's proportional to the pressure. So as the pressure reading drops, the number on my meter will drop. It's at 15.9% right now, um, and if I, I can test the health of the sensor by releasing a little bit of pressure and making sure that the sensor duty cycle drops. I can't overstate it enough. If you're not comfortable with doing this, do not risk touching the 12 volt line to anything going back to the car computer that can turn a otherwise simple diagnostic test into a very expensive one. And in order to get that live reading, I have this go-between wiring thingy that I made. It has three pins on one side that press in, so it's like a male pin, and then on the other side it's a female pin. And then I left two of them without any tape so that I can read between ground and the output. Um, make sure that you never, never let this pin, the red one, 12 volts, touch uh, either of the other two since they're going back to the computer. And even though like the computer's kind of powered by the car battery, not all the pins are 12 volt tolerant and especially this one because I know that it's like 5 volts or something or ground would be bad so you could damage your computer if you let the 12 volts touch. Whenever I squeeze this trigger it's going to remove uh, refrigerant from the system and put it into this can dropping the overall pressure. So it was at about 16.3, I think, and now, now it's dropped a little to 15. It's at 15.3%. We're going to remove a little more. 15, 15, 1.7. It dropped from 15.3 to 14.7 after removing some refrigerant. So. So far we've seen from the voltmeter that the sensor output uh, duty cycle is responding to a change in f um, refrigerant pressure. So I think that the sensor is working. However, when we ask the car computer to give us what its reading of the duty cycle is via uh, the VAGCOM um, utility it is not able to communicate it, it said it literally says failed to communicate but only for that particular 
uh, parameter, we can ask it for other data about the HVAC system and it has no problem responding. It's just um, measure block 001 that contains the, the reading from, and that's the one that's not, the computer, whatever reason, isn't able to give us that information. So, uh, oh, and there's also been a error code a fault code specifically related to uh, related to the G65. Uh, so right now we're potentially suspecting wiring any one of those three wires. It could be a bad ground. Um, it could be a, a break in the supply, the 12 volt supply, or in the data pin. Um, but the car computer thinks that there's a problem with the sensor and yet the voltmeter shows it changing duty cycle so it might be a wiring thing. Uh, this connector does not go directly back to the computer there's a, another intermediate connector up here and so I just wanted to test this segment it looks like a couple sensors joined together in here and I did that very easily the wires are a little dirty but I can still make out the colors and all three have good continuity so on the ohms setting I have both probes on either ends of the ground wire and it's reading 0 0.5 ohms so usually aren't particularly great at measuring low resistances precisely uh, but anything less than 0.5 is a pretty good connection. Uh, if you now, if you have a couple ohms, then y y you may have a a bad, you know, like a corroded connect contact somewhere or something. Um, so I just went through all three of the pins and made sure that I had a solid connection. I can at least rule out that the wires between this connector and this one are okay.